So good evening, everyone. I'm calling the meeting of the Finance Committee on March 30th to order. This open meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's order of March 12th, 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public, public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded to the public so that they can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to tbradley at town.arlington.ma.us. This meeting is con convening by Zoom video app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join and comment. Please note the meeting is being recorded and some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that folks may be able to see you and Take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. The materials that have been provided to members of this body are also available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. So well now, before we turn to the first item on the agenda, um, let me remind you that um, the chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda and after they conclude their remarks, members will provide comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until you're recognized and your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or your computer when you aren't speaking, and please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Uh, due to the size of my laptop screen, I may not be able to see all the members at once. If someone has raised their hand and I have not noticed, I hereby request that Tara Bradley or Annie LaCourt please bring this to my attention. So I will now uh, take the roll. <clears throat> please uh, indicate your presence. Uh, when I call your name. Uh, Grant Gibeon. Shane Blundell. Here. John Ellis. Makaya Healy. Here. Brian Beck. Here. Arif Padaria. Here. Sophie Migliazzo. Here. Jonathan Wallach. Here. Shailene Pokris. Daryl Harmer. He's not here. Andy LaCourt. Here. Alan Jones. Here. George Koser is not here. Bill Keller. Here. Alan Tosti. Here. Wanda Nascimento. Christine Deschler. Here. Dean Carmen. He's not here. David McKenna. Here. And Tara Bradley. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. So the meeting is going to move forward. Tara, do you have the minutes to put on the screen? Yes. Here are the minutes from Monday. Can you? Um... Oh, make it bigger? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So um, these minutes have been distributed. Does anyone have any comments, questions, edits, changes? Hearing none, a motion to accept the minutes is in order. Move they be accepted. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion on the minutes? Um, Shane Blundell? Yes. Nikaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Uh, I wasn't present. And Sophie Mag Magliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Shailene? She is then here. Daryl Harmer. Annie LaCourt. Here. Yes. 
Alan Jones. <laughs> Whichever one it is. <laughs> Alan Jones. Yes. And um, Bill Keller. Here. I mean, yes. Yes. Alan Tosti. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yeah. And David McKenna. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I also, uh, we have some guests tonight. Um, I meant to see if any of them were here. I don't see them on the screen yet, but let me um, mention who, who's going to be here. We'll have the town manager, perhaps with some representatives of the Clean Energy of Future Committee, Deputy Town Manager Sandy Fuller, Budget Analyst Julie Wayman, Ann Goodwin, Alicia Russell, and Joanne Robinson. They will probably come closer to the times that they are here. Um, so I would like to make a couple of comments before we jump into things. <clears throat> um, recently sent out a copy, a draft copy of the special town meeting warrant. Uh, I believe that it hasn't been adopted by the select board yet, which I, I think they may be reviewing it tonight. There will be a couple of financial articles on there, one of which um, is to deal with that uh, finance committee reserve amount for this year of a million, one million ninety-five thousand dollars for the school um, pop, student population growth uh, coverage that we were concerned about last year. Uh, and the reason, again, that we're doing that in the special town meeting is so that uh, the funds go into the override stabilization fund and can be used for next year's budget. If they go into free cash. We can't really access them until um, at least the fall, I think. Uh, just for the record, Tara distributed an updated water bodies committee budget uh, reflecting the changes we and the water bodies group agreed to on uh, Monday night. So that's now part of our written record. Um, I also think, I, I believe Tara sent another email out reminding all of us that we have to uh, catch up on our ethics training. Uh, I strongly urge anybody who hasn't yet, who's received this email and hasn't yet uh, taken their ethics course and test, please, please do so. Um, there's a good chance that we will finish on Monday night, April 4th. So please uh, keep April 6th in reserve in the event that we don't finish, but we may, we may wind up with a holiday that night. Uh, also keep in mind that we have a reserve date on April 14th. Um, pending the outcome of the House Ways and Means Committee recommendation on the state budget. On Monday, um, we, in addition, well, we're, we're building a, uh, I should I say we like, like it's the royal we, but actually Tara's doing all the work, but we're building the, um, the agenda for, for Monday night. And there's several items that are on there if you check the website, but we also want to add articles 64, 66, 69, 70, and 71. These are uh, you know, some general uh, budget articles that we have to treat at the end, like free cash, and contribution to the override stabilization fund, um, et cetera. Also, um, I think I mentioned that um, Alan Jones sent out a uh, copies of your budgets for you to review to make sure that they are accurate. We will review all the budgets and all of the Warren articles for consistency and accuracy um, on Monday night as well. Uh, so I think that's all I have there. Al Tosti, do you wanna make another pitch for the yeah, Association of Town Finance Committee meeting? Oh, I, I don't wanna beat it to death too much. Um, you, you saw the uh, email that was sent out has the agenda uh, down the bottom. So there's basically two workshops, uh, a slight breakfast and a lunch, and then you go home. So uh, if, if you're interested, let Tara know. Thank you. Uh, John, I noticed that John Ellis is here. Hi, John. Um, there was one other thing that I wanted to mention, um, which I didn't mention, and that is when we get to the... Um, when we get to the hearing of the Arlington Historical Commission of Fiscal 23 budget increase request, um, I'm going to recuse myself from that. And um, Christine Deschler is going to take over as chair. Uh, I have some uh, activity in front of the 
commission and I don't want to be involved in reviewing that uh, item in any way while uh, while that that is pending. Um, so. Oh, Charlie. First, yes. Oh, sorry. Did you want to make a note about the um, the deadline for the um, report? The, the finance committee report and the materials for the town meeting members. Well, um, you, you mean the, the, the email that came out today? Yes. Well, uh, I, I sent a message out to, uh, you know, they're asking for to have their report to um, the printer by the 6th. We may still be meeting on the 6th, so we'll just have to deal with that separately. Um, how are we doing for time here? 7.41. So um, the first item is this uh, net zero green greenhouse gas emissions from town facilities. Is the town manager with us? I see Julie Wayman is here. Sandy and I are both gonna be here tonight. Adam will not be here. Oh, okay. What article is it? This is article number nine. Is anybody gonna, from the Clean Energy's Future Committee going to be here, Julie? May have may have lost her for a moment. I think this article uh, came up because we at the time didn't know if uh, this had a financial impact or not. And if we are gonna have net zero greenhouse gas emissions from town facilities, um, that probably means at least we have to change the furnaces. I don't know, but we'll see what uh, what we hear. Sandy has just joined. Sandy's joining. Okay. Hi, Sandy. So, uh, uh, so welcome, Sandy and Julie. Uh, the first article is uh, the first item is this um, hearing on article number nine, the net zero greenhouse gas emissions. Does it, is that have any financial implications? Is that gonna cost us money? Hi, Charlie. Good evening Hi, to you. Good evening to everybody on the committee. Nice to see you all. Um, I will admit that I, so it's just looking at the agenda. I, I thought that there was going to be somebody from the uh, Energy Committee, Sustainability Committee, um, because I don't know a lot about this article. Um, so I apologize, Julie. I don't know if you do. So if you do, please go ahead. I'll just add that um, in briefly talking to Adam. What he had mentioned is that we are doing a um, building electrification study now. And so um, this will potentially inform um, you know, future bylaw changes, but at this point, the first step is gonna be this building electrification study. That's being undertaken at a number, a half a dozen schools right now to decide um, what to do about their HVAC issues, which we know many of these schools have HVAC issues, HVAC housing, um, I forget what the V is, NAC, heat, heat ventilation and air conditioning. Um, 
And uh, so we know that we need to do something. And the question is, do we, as Charlie just mentioned, replace existing boilers or try to go to an all electric system as we are, for example, doing in the high school, which is an all electric building. And can we, should we, and can we convert some of these other, um, other buildings? So this doesn't say that it's a study committee. It says it's gonna vote to update and replace Title I, Article 16. So, um, I, I, I think at this point, they don't, they don't have recommendations yet for what to do to um, update the, the current building code, which has us saying that we want to be at lead silver standards for all of our buildings. Um, I think I recall that as being our new building. Um, yes. When we passed um, the that lead, it was for, for new, new facilities, not for existing buildings. Well, I do think that part of the question is, depending on what this study comes up with, would it make sense to further change the bylaws to say that when we're doing major renovations or upgrades to heating systems, that they should uh, meet the new net zero standard. And I think that is what they want to look at, but they do not have a recommendation on that at this point. So um, I think I'm gonna propose that the committee um, not consider this right now and we do a will report. Um, my, my feeling is, is that we change, if we change the, let's put it this way, we're, we're in a situation where we're um, facing a huge override coming up. And if we change the bylaw that's, that puts an extra burden on, on the capital budget and on the town, um, it's gonna, they cost us money. I, I think we're gonna be heading in the wrong direction. If they come up with a plan where um, whatever changes we make are paid for by savings in fuel or something like that, that's entirely different. But um, I think we should not dispose of this article until we hear from the um, Energy Future Committee and understand exactly what it is that they're proposing to do. Are, does anybody have any objections to that? Okay, that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll do a will report. So, um, Shane, can I ask you to um, follow up on that subject and? Make sure we we have a, a hearing during the town meeting, or you know, at some convenient time before the town meeting, and and come up with a committee opinion on it. Sure, Charlie. So, um, am I, have we invited the commit the the clean energy folks? Well, would you like me to independently to do, to do no, this you research? Can work with work with Tower uh, Tara, do whatever research, but just make sure that we have. Yes, Julie. I just wanted to add one quick item that um, the select board did vote no action on this article um, last night. Ah. I think they still don't have a recommendation of what they want to do to propose any changes. So they just need to, they're a little bit up in the air right now. Um. I'll accept a motion from somebody that wants to move no action. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, so one article. Uh, Nine. What was it? Nine. Shane um, Blundell. This is yes. A motion is positive. If you want no action, say yes. Okay, no action. Um, Makaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Reef Padaria? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Andy Lacourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. 
Alan Tosti. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. And David McKenna. Yes. Okay, thank you. So if if um, if if this comes live again with the selectmen on some proposal, then we need to have a hearing and find out whether there's a cost and how much the cost is. But for now, we, we're just following the selectmen. Okay, um, thank you, Julie. It's nice that you're up to date on these things. <laughs> um, the next, uh, we have a series of um, town management issues here. The uh, PEG access budget, Article 46, um, Article 40, collective bargaining, uh, 56 committees and commissions, 57 town celebration events. I don't, I thought we did those, but um, 58 miscellaneous, and then uh, the transportation infrastructure fund. So are you prepared to discuss those? Um, so why don't we begin with article uh, 46, Sandy? Um, just remind me that what the no number is. Is that the uh, PEG access? That's the PEG access, yes. The ACMI okay. budget. That's Thank a super, you. right? Yes. So um, I had sent to Tara earlier today uh, the ACMI budget, uh, and um, I have it on my screen. Let me see if I can share it. And then let me make it a size that is that visible, Charlie? That's good. Yes, it is. Okay. So I talked to Norman Cloud today. Uh, he sent me these figures. They are based on um, the numbers that they are seeing from the number of subscribers that they have in town. Um, and the revenue that they're getting from the three cable producers. Um, these numbers are down slightly, uh, about twenty-five dollars to $30,000 in terms of total revenue from where they were last year, partly because uh, they feel that during COVID, um, they have seen people dropping uh, cable just because it was a cost that they couldn't maintain. Um, he does feel that this will rebound as things start to come back. Um, but this is his realistic expectation of, uh, of what their revenue is going to be. Um, their salaries and taxes have, and associated taxes have come down slightly, mostly because they had some staff turnover and the people they hired were hired at a lower salary than the previous people. Um, so overall from a year ago, their budget is down, as I said, uh, about, um, it's about $34,000 from where they were before. Again, reflecting what they think is, has been a slight decrease. Um, we have had to have town meeting vote these budgets for the last couple of years because of changes to um, the law about PEG access or the ACMI budget. Um, it used to be that we didn't get into this level of detail, but now they provide us with this every year. Um, and unless there are questions, I think that's pretty much everything I have to say about this. Thank you, Sandy. Are there any questions? Yes, Shane. Thanks, Sandy. Um, how many subscribers are there in town and how many, I see the 505, how many staff does that support at ACM? <laughs> you know, I almost asked him that question when I, you know, I talked today, but I didn't. I don't know, Shane. I'd be glad to follow okay. up with him. He is more than happy to send the committee any information. Uh, and so I will make sure to transmit your question and then send it to Tara for the whole committee. Thanks. John Ellis. Yeah, I wonder if the economics of getting rid of cable, but because of the lots of other services like uh, YouTube TV and 
other ones. That's that's what I've switched to, and a lot of people I know have switched to. So I assume we don't get the cable income when that happens. And I would expect that trend to continue. And if that trend does continue, what what are they going to do if every year we lose another ten percent of uh, of um, cable subscribers? People are moving to alternate web based services. There is legislation in the state house now that would impose fees on things like Hulu and other services or of streaming services that would make up for some of that revenue loss as people have stopped subscribing to Comcast and, and so forth for their cable provision. You know, they may just have internet access anymore. Other states have adopted this law that would um, charge these streaming companies, um, the revenue would then be split with, um, I believe the numbers are 40% of the revenue would go to the state, 20% would come to the town and 20% would go to the peg access. Although I may have those last two percentages mixed up. I don't have revenue numbers, but I do know that this is an issue that's being debated as, as I say, other states have already adopted this law. And that may mean in the future that we will see uh, streams of revenue to the town and to ACMI um, by charging these uh, streaming services. Makes sense, thanks. Any other questions for Sandy? So Sandy, I have one. Um, what happens if they, um, let's say they, um, cable revenue drops, uh, operating funds. Um, is, the town, is the town liable for the for any losses that uh, ACMI has? Um, well, I think it would be first up to ACMI to maintain a balanced budget during the year. So if they were to see a precipitous drop, they would have, just have to cut back on some of their costs, just like any department would have to do. Down the road, I think, Charlie, there's probably a policy decision that the town would have to make whether we would want to subsidize ACMI, but that is something that we so far have not had to do and have not taken up. Um, and I, you know, I don't see that on the horizon. Um, so uh, I will say I think that Arlington has a very active ACMI, a very active PEG access thing deliver a wide array of services. I think we have benefited from them really being on top of things over the years and providing us good service more so than I think you may see even in other towns. So, um, you know, we would keep an eye on that, um, but I don't think we are legally obligated to, to pay their, uh, their costs if they don't have the revenue coming in, I think is. Yeah, that, that was really my question because, uh, for example, in the enterprise funds, the town has to provide, if, if the revenues don't meet the expenses, the town has to make up the difference. This is not an enterprise fund. This is some sort of independent legal entity of some, of some sort. I don't know what the, uh, so. Yes, it was just set up under state law. Any money they don't spend from year to year, they do retain and they do have a fund that they have put money in for like a reserve fund um, from any savings they've had from year to year. And they've tried to you know, invest that. I, I don't know what the amount is. I don't think it's a huge amount, but um, they do have a little bit of backup in case they have a fall in revenue. Okay. So any further questions? Yes, Annie, I see your hand is up. Yeah, I just wondered, Sandy, do you know whether or not they're restricted in any way from raising um, uh, revenue through subscriptions or other like earned revenue? So um, they have talked about kind of back and forth around doing fundraising in the past. I know they've had events. I think some of those events have mostly broken even because mm -hmm. they've been as much celebratory as they have been fundraising. Yep. They are thinking about the possibility of having, I would call them, I won't call them ads, but kind of the same sort of sponsorship announcements that you hear on PBS, or you might yep. hear the name of a, a local business. And uh, you know, if this 
program is sponsored by you know XYZ company. They have not gone to that yet because of their own reasons and they're still debating it, but they did mention to me when I talked to them that that is something that they are looking at. Well, as long as we don't have to listen to that, um, that, that guy with the Scandinavian boats, you know, that you hear all the time. Well, the same man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I doubt that Viking Cruises will, will be the one sponsoring ACMI, but you know, you never know. Is that, is that any? Okay, thank you. Any, any other questions for Mr. Pooler? Okay, let's, um, let's move to a vote. Is, is there a motion? Move that we accept the budget as presented. Second. It's moved and seconded. No further discussion. We'll move right into a vote. Um, Shane Blundell. Yes. Kaya. Yes. Brian. Yes. Arif. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Annie LaCourt. Yes. I think you Alan. skipped John Ellis. Oh, I did. John Ellis, you're right. Yes. Thank you, John. Um, thank you, Annie. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Bill Keller. Yes. <clears throat> Al Tassi. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Yeah. And David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. The vote is unanimous. The next is uh, collective bargaining, um, Mr. Pooler, Finance Director Pooler. This is a big issue, big article. It is a big article. Tonight, I do not have specific numbers for you, although I think by the time town meeting comes around, we will. Um, we are very close with two unions, the librarians, I expect by the end of this week, we will have a memorandum of agreement and get their support. We're meeting with FIRE and uh, I would expect that we will, on Friday, and I would expect that we will have a deal with FIRE soon um, and that we will be able to present that at town meeting. Um, but, as I say, we're still working out the final details with the fire union. So, so you normally have a plug number, um, a reserve number that we use in the- um, to, Yes. To seal the- uh, Oh, yes. So in the budget, let me just get you that plug number, unless Julie, you happen to have it. I'm having to look it up. Do you want to announce that publicly? Well, I don't mind doing that because I've come around to Al from the old days when Steve Sorello told me to hide money as best you can, that that is the hallmark of a finance director, to coming around to the position that if you don't tell the unions how much you have, they're just going to make up their own number, which is going to be ridiculously higher than anything you could possibly have. So I think it, we're actually uh, in better shape. Um, I see that Alan Jones has said 1,323,572. Julie, I don't think that's what's in the budget, but could you verify that? I'm pulling up the armor master budget right now. Yeah, that was in the budget for it might have changed so. so. Thank you, Alan. Yes, because we're, we're just gonna double check that. Um, so uh, yes, we will put forward a, a number for the FY23 budget, which Julie will pull up as, in just a second. Um, or Julie, do you have access to that? You have your computer? Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, connect I'm connecting. Yeah, okay. Um, and um, then I do expect to come back to the committee for both the fire and librarians union for a specific uh, recommendations for allocations to those departments to fund those contracts. Uh, I will say that the other unions uh, we have out there, uh, we are in close discussions with Ask Me, but um, we have come to, um, we've offered them their, their last best offer, which means that we are now in uh, going to mediation with Ask Me. It's something that we have not done with 
are, uh, these are mostly our clerical and DPW workers. We've not done before, but um, we're gonna to have to do that. And that could be months before that, anything happens on that. For our patrol union, um, we, they have told us they intend to file for uh, arbitration at the Joint Labor Management Committee. That will probably be six months before we even have a first hearing on that, just knowing how long that takes. Uh, the other two unions that are not settled at this point are the ranking officers, in other words, the sergeants, uh, lieutenants, and uh, police captains. They um, have traditionally, they have often in the past waited until patrol has settled before they've engaged in negotiations with us because they want to see what the pattern is. We have reached out to them, um, but I doubt that we will have anything for town meeting. And then the last union is SEIU. Um, we've had started conversations with them. There's an outside chance we'd be able to get to them by town meeting. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, we're not very far along with them. Julie, do you have that number? Yeah, Alan was right. Yeah, 1,323,572. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Julie. So that's the number we would like you to vote for the salary reserve. It represents what we think contracts will cost in FY23 and money in that to make up, uh, to put money in for how we have to bring things up from FY22. Uh, all the contracts expired at the beginning of FY23, except the librarians and SAIU, each of which went for a one-year contract. Um, and we are trying to negotiate three-year deals with the, um, with the unions to go for FY22, 23, and 24. So um, does anyone have any further questions on this article? Yes, Brian. Um, Sandy, now, do me a favor. I don't want to step on any toes and you can say no comment, because I understand um, in general. Um, how much is inflation affecting this? Is the, 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 with seven or eight percent inflation potentially out there, I, I, you know, I'm just like cringing at these thoughts. Um, so, without revealing our positions on the negotiations, I would say that that is an, uh, an area of discussion between us and the unions. Okay, I'll wait till after. John Ellis. <clears throat> in your negotiations, are you asking for any work rule changes? Any streamlining or task changes? Is that um, something that's in discussion with any of these unions? And, and what's the scope of those? Um, I would say yes, but I would not go into any of the details with you tonight. Uh, we have formally or informally agreements with the unions that all discussions about negotiations are confidential until there's a final deal. Okay. Could some of those efficiencies and work rule changes reduce town costs? Um, Increase productivity? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, John. <clears throat> John, you can put your hand down. Alan Jones. Hi, uh, Mr. Chair, can I do a little a short tutorial on how this works mechanically? Yes, you can. Okay. Go right ahead. In, in Article 49, we set aside money that the manager's office has said might be available for uh, salary increases and such associated with collective bargaining. If, for example, a settlement's made between now and town meeting on, let's say, the fire uh, uh, union, or, or let's say the police officer, the ranking officer's union, what would happen is that increase would go into their budget and the collective bargain ar article would be reduced by the same amount. So the bottom line doesn't change. We're shifting money from an unknown to a known if an agreement's reached. So, Make sense? 
Thank you. Thank you, Alan. So <clears throat> any other questions for Sandy on this article 49? Okay, um, motion is in order for um, $1,323,572 in uh, Article 49. So button? moved. Second. So it's moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, we, we'll go to a vote. Um, Shane Bundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Natasha Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes. Sophie Migliasso? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Dar uh, here. Uh, Annie LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Alan Tosti? Yes. Wanda Ness, uh, Christine Deschler? Yes. And uh, David McKenna? Yes. Uh, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. The next one is um, Committees and Commissions, Article 30, uh, 56. Um, is there any open items there that... Uh, Yeah, can you flip that uh, that summary up, Tara? Yep. Please. So the only open items are the uh, Commission on Disability and the Arlington Historic Commission, which is coming in later. Okay. So we can um, give you a holiday on that one, Sandy. Uh, town celebrations and events. Don't go away, uh, Tara. We, we need that screen oh. up there as well. Do you want me to pull up the, um, the article for the budget? Uh, yeah, we have four. I think there are four items in there, right? Um, yes. Um, let me pull that up. Town, town day, a couple of parades. Or or what is it? Miscellaneous or something like that? Let's see here. No, it's not. It's uh, article Article 57. Town celebration. Uh, fl flags on graves, town day, and veterans memorial and Patriots Day. Right. Um, yeah, this didn't have a dollar amount. Yeah, that's what we're trying to determine. So, um, is there a recommendation from the town manager on those items? Julie, I think, can speak to that. Julie, are you prepared to speak to that? Uh, it's in the it's in the manager's budget book. Yeah, I do. Um have the amounts that we did recommend in the budget if would that be helpful oh this yes, okay. yes tara I think. has any of this changed no let me make my screen bigger so no. are we going to have, have are we going to have a town day this year Yes, they are. Um, I believe two select board members are working on that. Okay. And no, those three numbers for 23 have not changed. Okay. And then what was the fourth category, um, Alan? Uh, Memorial Day and Patriots, they are lumped together in the top line. And Veterans Day, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, and Patriots, they are lumped okay, together. Okay, I got it. Line. Right. All right. We have display of American flags on Mass Ave, which last, which last year was zero. And um, this year, Sandy, correct me if I'm wrong, but this year DPW is possibly going to be doing that, right? Yeah, around Patriot's Day this year. That's correct. Okay, so Tara, could you flip back to that budget book, please? 
Thank you. So um, a motion is in order for uh, the three uh, categories shown on page uh, 200 of the town manager's budget book, uh, $5,667 for Vets, uh, Veterans Memorial and Patriots Day celebrations, uh, $4,500 for the display of flags and $5,000 for town day. Is, uh -huh. It's been moved and seconded. It's moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing um, on article 57, we move to a vote here. Uh, Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Kaya Healy. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Arif Padaria. Yes. Sophie Migliazzo. Yes. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Annie LaCourt. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Uh, Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yeah. And David McKenna. Yes. Okay, that's unanimously passed. Um, <clears throat> or in Article 58, which was miscellaneous. Is that the one that was moved to the special town meeting? Really can address this one too, Mr. Chair. That's the legal fund and indemnification. Yes. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So we had just recently heard from um, the doctor with a, a slightly adjusted number for this. So um, the actual number we'd gotten recently, 10,941. So it's slightly up from the manager's budget. Okay. Um, this is an article we deal with uh, every year. And um, as Julie said, sometimes the number fluctuates a little bit. Um, are there any questions for Julie on this article? Okay. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, so this is Article 58 for um, $10,941. Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Kaya Healy. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Arif Padaria. Yes. 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 So, yes. Um, Yes. Jonathan Wallach, yes, sorry. I lost my place here. Uh, Annie LaCourt. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yeah. And David McKenna. Uh, I will have to abstain. Abstain, okay. Twelve in favor and one, one abstention. Thank you. So that article is passed. And then um, we have the um, Transportation Infrastructure Fund, Article 59. Sandy? I think Julie is going to present Julie? on this. Okay. So the um, amount that we are um, looking for town meeting to um, approve this year is $13,807.20. This was the amount from 2020 from Uber and Lyft rides originating in Arlington. Can you repeat and that? And so this... Sorry, can you repeat that number? Yes, $13,807.20. So is that a tax, Julie, on the um, Uber drivers or Uber riders? It is, yeah, and it, it's a fee that the originating communities get a small portion of the 20 cents on the ride. Um, but it, you know, went down significantly in 2020. Um, but yes, that is that is a fee that the towns the originated. This is this is this is coming. The state charges the charges the amount, yep. and it's 
and they, they distribute it back to the town. Mm -hmm. So this is the money from um, 2020, which we are going to appropriate into the 2023 budget. Yes. And Julie, do you want to tell them how it's going to be used? So um, for sidewalks and pedestrian safety improvements, similar to how it's been used in the years past. Um, you mean like fixing sidewalks? Yes. Yep. We have recently um, used some of it around the um, chestnut and mystic work that was going on. And it might continue to be used in, in that area, but yes, some of the sidewalks um, around the center. Are there any uh, further questions for Julie on that subject? Uh, motion is in order. Um, 59. So we're just moving to accept, correct? Or are we moving uh, no, to appropriate? We're, we're, we're moving to support the appropriation. This is an appropriation. Okay. So I move that we support the appropriation for um, $13,807.20. Yeah, what he said. Second. So it's moved and seconded. Any further discussion or questions? Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Kaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif? Yes. Uh, Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Yes, okay. Well, Jonathan yeah. Wall. Jonathan yes. Wall. John, did I hear you say yes? Yes. Uh, unmute problem. Daniel yes. Court? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. David McKenna? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. That is passed. Um, I think that's all we have on the list for you, um, Julie and Sandy. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to uh, bring up? No, there's nothing else I think that we need to talk about tonight. Julie, do you have anything else? No, I don't think so. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate uh, your- Mr. Chairman, have we heard yes. this, Barber? Barber? Have we heard the Harry Barber program? I believe we did. So they're, they're staying the same with the seventeenth, the $7,500 as last year, same as last year. Okay. Uh, so there is a Warren article. Uh, there was a, there is a Warren article in here that I, I think you could confirm for us. Uh, the, the one about changing the budgets from um, fiscal 22. That was the that had to do with the reserve fund. And we're just going to vote no action on that, right? Because it's going to be in the special town meeting. Correct. Okay, good. Mr. Uh, Chair, have we heard the uh, article that moves the budget process up? Uh, no. Three weeks? Uh, no, that's, that's a good question. I, I should have mentioned that. Um, so I had a conversation with the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, and um, we didn't come to any conclusion other than the, um, the board is not going to discuss it until after the election, probably on the 6th. And sometime, so they're going to they're do a will report to town meeting and sometime between now and town meeting, the finance committee and the uh, select board will discuss this and determine if there's a compromise, um, if there's a fight, or if there's capitulation by somebody. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. Okay. So. Um, 
Andy, thank you, Julie. Appreciate your time. Thank you for your expeditious consideration tonight. <laughs> okay. Good night. Uh, you're welcome. Good evening. Thank you. So, um, I don't think our other guests are here yet. What time is it? Oh, we're yeah, we got a big gap. Okay, so um, we can jump to the uh, to this uh, subject that we've been postponing for quite some time, which is the uh, parking district um, information. It's 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 basically old business. It's been on the agenda before, so we have some time. We can address it right now. And Brian, can you can you handle that? Sure. Um, Sarah, can you bring up the uh, worksheet that I sent you? Yes. Or actually, that I'm not sure. The one that Sandy sent that has the two pages. Um, yeah, I think I have. Parking. One. Yes. One one second here. Okay, so this I believe is the one maybe you sent. Yeah, if you, you, you can use the one that I sent, which had the two pages on it. If not, you can use the one that Sandy sent. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Okay. You make it a little bit larger because these are, I, I, I'm looking at my page and they're small. <laughs> let, me try it. let me just download it because it's not, um, resizing very well. So let me let me download it and open it up as a PDF. Um, while she's doing that, um, basically um, the issue in the in the parking district is the revenues that are coming in, obviously because of the pandemic. Um, historically, um, uh, Charlie had asked a question of, about uh, what it was in the, when they first started this, which is around 2017, the anticipation of revenues was about $500,000 a year. And then that was back in 2017. And they were dancing around that number for the first few years until the pandemic hit. Um, the actual revenues, okay, this, it's on the screen there. Um, in the second box down in the middle, I don't know if you can read it, uh, it's the- Can you make it a little bigger, Tara, please? Okay, uh, it's, it's almost dead center right now. It's uh, fiscal 22 actual uh, until 323. Um, that number at is um, $227,000. Um, they, they're based on that, they're projecting for fiscal 23, $309,000 for the year. Uh, they're expecting for this year in the box to the left of that number, um, and uh, it has listed projected fiscal year 22, the projected revenues are $303,000. So they're basically $200,000 less than was anticipated when they started these programs. Um, going to the upper right, in, you'll see expenditures for fiscal um, 23. Um, IPS, CC, or, or credit cards, and coin collections um, are basically uh, fees that they have to pay um, to the different vendors. IPS is the software company that actually um, handles the uh, meters. That's $111,800. The lease payments, which is next line down, are lease pay are payments to the church for the parking spaces by the library. So that's also, um, uh, I believe there's a lease, uh, an actual lease on that. Um, the parking enforcement is the um, the persons that are shared from the treasurer's office and the um, uh, the police department. There's a, if you remember in the the two budgets, there was uh, offsets, and those offsets are from uh, this particular uh, budget. Now they have the multi space meters of sixty four thousand dollars. Now. Um, there's an issue going on right now, which I don't know if everybody heard in the news. Um, 3G was turned off by most of the uh, carriers and our parking meters are 3G. So there, 
they have two choices um, in at this time. One is to replace the meters. The other is to upgrade the meters. Upgrading would be about forty thousand dollars to fifty thousand dollars. This budget shows sixty four thousand. That's to replace the meters, and do in doing so, it would be much more much easier to repair the meters. Um, Apparently, when they need parts for the meters, uh, it takes up to three to four weeks to get the parts for the current meters um, before they get fixed. Um, that hopefully will be alleviated when they get the new meters. So the, upgrading the meters they have would just be, they think, not futile, but it wouldn't be cost effective in the long run. Um, then there's the parking district um, expenses, which are listed down below. If you go to, uh, Tara, if you could just page down a little bit in that same column to the right. A little bit more. Can you pick? Yep, yeah, right there. Um, the, the top item of $50,000 is for sidewalk improvements um, in uh, Arlington Center. Uh, the next line, the Russell Common uh, lot, they plan to do uh, new lighting and uh, fix up the pavement there. That's 65,000. Uh, snow removal has been taken out of the budget. Uh, it's gonna be handled by DPW. Um, seasonal planting, they put plants in the planters there on an annual basis. And then taking care of everything is an additional um, $40,000. Now the $40,000 um, is also in, Also in regards to expanding the parking district, which was approved by the selectmen, um, there, the parking district is now gonna include Chestnut Street in that area around Chestnut Street where they plan to do a lot of improvements. And part of this um, money is going for that, which includes crosswalks um, and other and meters in that area. So the whole budget uh, for expenditures is $487,000. $487,540. The revenues are $309,260. And that leaves a shortfall. Now, if you go down to the next page below it, I've tried to do a recap of there is cash in their, in their fund right now. Uh, I, I, let me rephrase. There was cash in the beginning of fiscal 22 of $472,000. They estimated the current um, current year uh, revenues of 303,000 and the expenditures that they anticipate for this year's 319. That leaves at the end of the year, 400. I, actually, let me, use, let me look at my numbers because I can't see the screen. <laughs> um, 456,764 dollars coming into fiscal year 30, uh, 23. So we we're budgeting a revenues of 309, 260, expenditures of 487, 540. At the end of the period, there'll be $278,484 left in their fund. Questions? Mr. Bryan, yes, Alan Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The, I noticed there was twenty-five thousand dollars for sidewalk cleaning around the Blue Bike Station. Would would that be required if the Blue Bike Station wasn't there? I don't know. I asked. Uh, I asked about that. Uh, they just said it's just sidewalk. I don't think the blue the Blue Bike Station had anything to do with it, except it was the location. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, um, so we don't actually so, vote. Charlie, sorry, uh, uh, I was I trying to unmute. May I ask a question? Yes, please. Yeah, so this 3G is going away, but I, I, I use a lot of the pay by phone. So can we not just switch everything to pay by phone and not take on any more hits? Or is this, uh, uh, have they thought through that? I so have no idea. I, I, I didn't address that. I actually got the budget today. <laughs> Yeah, but has anyone here used pay by phone? I use it, but I think um, 
I think the credit cards also require the wireless. Yeah, they require the you said yeah, credit, credit cards do require require. Uh, okay. So, so we have to go back to throwing quarters on the meter. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, honestly, uh, Ari, that that's a pretty good idea. But it, the problem is, I think they've already invested all the money in the meter, so it's a it's a sunk cost in general. Because if you think about it, if you um, used uh, pay by phone, you wouldn't need the meters at all, because you just you park in a specific area, and th they would have the, your license plate number when you park. They would they'd have that be able to check it. Okay. Hopefully, one day they'll all get rid of them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Arif. Um, any other questions for, for Brian? Okay, uh, so we, um, I um, we don't really appropriate this money. This money is being spent. Uh, it, check me if I'm, I'm wrong on this, Brian, but I think this is uh, this parking district fund is a self-standing fund. Yes, right? I believe it's off budget. Yeah. So uh, as part of the agreement between the finance committee and the town, when we supported the creation of this parking district fund, they would um, come to us uh, with this information each year and we would uh, either support it or not support it, but we're not actually um, voting it or recommending it to town meeting to vote because town meeting uh, doesn't vote on it. What, what town meeting votes on is the parking budget that we, we, already, we already voted on um, a couple of weeks ago. So, um, Last year was endorse. Yeah, didn't Move I just to endorse it? I thought I used the word. Did I use the word endorse? Oh, yes, I said support. Okay. Yeah. But endorse, yeah. I, I moved so, to endorse it as presented. Uh, there's mo movement to uh, mo motion to endorse. There's second. second. Okay, so let's uh, take a vote here. Uh, Shane Blundell. Yes. Uh, John Ellis. Yes. Kaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Uh, yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Andy LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Alan Tosti? Yes. Christine Dechler? Yeah. And David McKenna? Yes. Okay, thank you. The, the, the Finance Committee favorably endorses the parking district uh, fund budget. Okay. We are being so efficient tonight. Um, it's boggling my mind here. Um, do we have any? Nobody's here for the next budget, right? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I don't think we voted Article 52, which is amendments to 2022 budgets. So if, if we haven't, I'd move no action on the grounds that we're doing it in the special. Uh, that's appropriate. Is there a second? Second. So it's moved. Got his hands up. Yes, yeah. Alan, who has hands up? Um, Did you have your hand up? No. I did, but it was for a different question. You can ask it. Uh, I, I, I don't have a recording of the vote of the hundred thousand usual hundred thousand dollar appropriation to long term stabilization fund. Have we done that? No, we're okay. planning to do those on Monday. Okay, thank you. Monday next. Um, it's been moved and seconded on Article Fifty Two for no action. Any further discussion? Shane Mundell? Yes. Uh, John Ellis? Yes. Kaya Healy? Yes. Arif Padaria? Oh, no, Brian, yes. Beck. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Annie LaCourt? Yes. Jones? Yes. 
Bill Keller. Yes. Alan Tosti. Yes. Uh, Christine Deschler. Yeah. And David McKenna. Yes. Okay. Um, well, let's uh, let's do that. Um, it's not it's not on the agenda, but let's. Um, the uh, what was the the article you just referred to, um, Alan? Harry Barber. Uh, no, no, we voted that already. Uh, Seventy. The appropriation of the long term stabilization fund. It's typically a hundred thousand. Is that in the uh, manager's um, budget book? Uh, It would be around page 195. Page 202. Right there. Hundred thousand dollars, right? Okay. So, um, Alan, you want to make a motion for that? I move an appropriation of a hundred thousand dollars to the long-term <laughs> stabilization fund. To the long-term stabilization fund. Second. Moved, moved and seconded. And what's the article number? Uh, oh. 70. 70. 70, okay. All right, uh, any further discussion on this article? Shane Mundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Kaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes, sir. Uh, Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Daryl, uh, Amy LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Oh, she's not here. Christine Deschler? Yeah. And David McKenna? David McKenna? I think we lost David. He's we can still see him moving. Is he still on his on the screen? Yeah, maybe he lost his sound. Oh, he's waving back. Dave. <laughs> can he not hear? I don't know. Him? I just lost the sound. Oh. I just lost the sound. I, I vote yes on that. Okay, thank you, David. Nice to have you back. <laughs> okay. Um, Let me just take a quick look at the uh, warrant. Okay, we can vote the of the appropriation for the overlay reserve, Article sixty nine. So the, um, as I mentioned on my, the uh, Board of Assessors has voted 750,000, to give $750,000 back to the town um, from the res uh, overlay reserve sur surplus. Um, 
So the concept here is to um, vote $400,000 into the budget for fiscal 23, which is what we have planned. And the additional $350,000 to put into the override stabilization fund. So, um, so we, we would, I'm just, um, Alan, have you got a way to think about how to earmark this money? Well, I think we just have a to make a motion to transfer four hundred thousand to, I guess, to be expended, to be appropriated, and three fifty to the stabilization fund. Um, yeah, but the stabilization oh. fund is a, is a separate um, a separate article. Yeah. Um, why, don't we, why don't we just do the four hundred thousand like we always do? do that vote. And then when we get to the uh, fiscal stability fund, we'll just add the 350 to the balance. Uh, the 350 comes from the over uh, uh, the overlay. In other words, don't uh, do, what, it, do it. I, yeah, I think to balance it, maybe we should appropriate 750,000 transfer from the overlay reserve and then just increase the fiscal stability by 350 when we get to that article. Or, or decrease the take from. Like yeah, that's why, okay, so tonight what we'll do is we'll we'll accept it. We'll transfer the 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 um, we'll vote in support of the seven hundred and fifty thousand and vote um, put four hundred thousand into to the um, into the into the operating budget and, and leave the remaining three hundred fifty thousand until we go to the override stabilization fund article. Yeah, I mean, if we if we don't increase any other appropriation by three hundred fifty thousand dollars, then it'll just fall into the the, yep. the, the override stabilization article. Right. Okay. Um, Alan Jones, do you want to make a motion? Well, first, uh, let me ask a question. Does anyone have any questions on this in the um, before we before we make a motion? I, I, can I just, Charlie? It's Shane. Go right ahead, Shane. Can somebody just repeat that one more time for the folks in the back, just so I understand what we're doing here? Yeah. So, okay. So, normally, um, the the board of assessors determines that they have excess or surplus funds that they have in reserve for the, for covering abatements. And um, former finance committee chairman Alan Tosti raised the issue uh, about a month ago as to whether or not we were getting enough money from those reserves into the override stabilization fund to deal with the upcoming um, override problems, et cetera. And um, <clears throat> I recently had a conversation with um, Mary Quinn Stanley O'Connor, one of the assessors, they voted to increase the amount from the normal $400,000 that they have been doing to $750,000. And uh, they also will do a review. I asked, I asked them to do a review of what their needs are. In other words, take a look at the last five years, see what's how big the abatements were and any tax judgments and, uh, against them and so forth. And, and then come forward, look forward for for the next several years as to what they think they need. And we can put that in the um, Mr. Uh, five year plan. Yeah. Mr. So, Chair, just yes. one special suggestion. If we just go ahead and appropriate uh, or transfer the whole $750,000, which just basically gets used to pay the bills, then it'll automatically, like Alan said, reduce the amount of money we have to take from the override stabilization fund. So it'll accomplish the same thing. Yeah. So I, I have a motion. Go ahead. Uh, and I'm reading from last year's. 
with one edit, that the sum of $750,000 be and hereby is appropriated to be transferred from overlay reserve surplus accounts of previous fiscal years, said sum to be utilized in the determination of the tax rate. Second. It's moved and seconded. Um, so, um, you have, I, I'm, let me ask you, Shane, um, has, is your question answered? Um, I, I, I think so. It sounds like this is not surpluses from one fiscal year, but maybe across multiple fiscal years. Uh, well, the, the, yeah, the overlay reserve, I mean, they, they have abatements and they have um, tax disputes, et cetera. So in any given year, they might resolve disputes that have been going on for three years or four years. So, um, they have to make a judgment as to how much money they need to handle in their reserve account to, to deal with the various abatements um, over time. Okay. So, uh, and all that information in general is um, executive session privileged. I mean, it's a, it's a dispute between citizens and the board of assessors. Um, and it's it, it's uh, privileged until they make a decision. And then uh, when they make a decision, they've either used so much or not used so much. So, and we, we also appropriate money into the overlay reserve. So uh, as an expense, so that bounces out over the years. And the, the question that was raised uh, by Al Tassi some weeks ago is, you know, are, is, that, is that reserve building up too much? And, and so they were willing to give us, give the town um, somewhat more, almost twice as much as they normally would. But we still, still, we still would like to get from them a reasonable assessment as what's needed in the future because that does the uh, town surplus or deficit. Thank you. So, so in other words, we have a surplus of a 750 and we're gonna vote or at least the vote on the table is to take that money and put it into the operating budget. And then, but sort of over the long term, we've asked the assessors to sort of take, look, take a look back, maybe sort of predict, looking back and sort of predict what they'll need in the future. Maybe, maybe they'll come back and say they don't need as much every in future fiscal years. We hope but, so. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, they, they, their, their account, um, when, when uh, I don't know whether it was Al or um, Brian Beckler, whoever was doing the assessor's budget. Um, they got a printout of the reserve account over the last uh, probably eight years or something like that. And, and it varies. I think the lowest was, was 2 million and the highest was 4 million. So, um, you know, maybe they, they can overall lower it by a million and just keep going forward that way. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? So it is moved and seconded to uh, transfer $750,000 um, from the overlay reserve surplus. Um, so we'll move, go to a vote. Uh, what article was this? Um, 69. 59, okay. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Kaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Annie LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Alan Tosti? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. And David McKenna? Yes. So it's passed unanimously. Um, so just don't anybody get too fancy and try to spend that extra $350,000. We want it to go into the override, override stabilization fund. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, Charlie, I have a question about Article 68. Uh, this might have been voted on when I wasn't here. 
Um, was the vote 100 to transfer 150,000 from, from Loss and Graves? Um, okay, I, I don't have that in front of me. Do we can? Um... Tara, do you have that? Yeah, uh, yes. We had, there were two numbers, 15,000, and then there was another. Um... Three, seven. Let me get the minutes up from three, seven. Yeah, we, we did the capital budget, I think. But I don't know if we did DPW. If we haven't done DPW, we can do DPW. <clears throat> How much is DPW? It's 180,000. We just did this $10,000 piece from capital planning. Okay. Okay. So we can do the DPW. for Article 68, I believe it is. So, um, is, that, is that the number in the town manager's budget book? Let's just check that. Would this be in the DPW budget? No, it would be in the... Art, uh, miscellaneous articles, I think, Warren articles. <laughs> um. I don't see it. The, the offset in the cemetery budget is 180,000, and that is traditionally the okay. That's the answer. The amount. Okay. So, Christine, you want to move that? I, I, yeah, I don't know what the language is. It's Article 68, but I move that uh, uh, the 180,000 is taken from uh, the sale of lots and graves and/or professional care for uh, cemetery operating costs. Usually just say, well, let's see what we said last year. Yeah, whatever we said last year, the number this year is 180,000. 100, yeah, 180 to the cemetery commissions <clears throat> for the care of the towns. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Nakaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Marie, are you? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Uh, Annie LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. And David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. Uh, that is also passed. Good, good work. Um, so it, it's nine o'clock, I think. Um, do we have our guests, uh, Ann Goodwin and Alicia Russell here for Article 16? Yes, I'm here. This is Ann. I'm here. This is Alicia. Wonderful. Welcome to the uh, Finance Committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, this is the um, this is the article on um, amendment uh, bylaw noise amendment for gas powered leaf blowers. Yes. So. Um,
Oh. Can you um, explain what you intend to do with this article? Do you want a, a summary of of the of the article? Is that what you're asking? Yes, or or yes. if you have the actual actual language that you plan the front of town meeting, and can tell us um, if there are costs associated with it, how much those costs are. Well, so essentially, we're f the um, purpose of the article is to phase out gas-powered leaf blowers over the next three years. So by March fifteenth, twenty twenty-five. Uh, for municipal and commercial use and till March 15th, 2026 for residential use. Uh, we are, um, so we, we, there are some costs that we think might be associated with it. I don't really know exactly how much they'll be, but I can, I can outline what areas we think they're, they're going to be in. So the facilities department owns, uh, I think it's eight, wait a second, I've got it. The DPW has about eight gas powered leaf blowers now. Um, Mike uh, Rademacher has uh, told me he thought maybe it, maybe about one a year would need to be replaced. So that would leave five that had not been just replaced, you know, from natural attrition at the time that the phase out would take place. So they would need to be replaced. He estimates about $500 each. So this happens in 2025. The facilities department has 15 leaf blowers and they replace about three a year. Um, so uh, Jim Feeney said he th thinks they would replace Maybe 10, maybe all of the ones. Oh, they've already replaced three of them with electric leaf blowers. So they are already in the in the process of replacing the gas powered ones when they wear out with electric ones. So um, they're already in the process of doing this. But if they have not completely done that by March 15th, 2025, they might need a bump in the capital appropriation to to replace whichever ones are are, are left, which could be two or three uh, of these of these leaf blowers. And he he thought at the out at the outside it would be about uh, two thousand dollars to do that. So so that's what we know about replacement of equipment. Then Alicia is going to say some things about uh, licensing or permitting and um, and education costs. I just wanted to make sure you didn't have any questions for Anne regarding those. Oh, thank you. Why don't Why don't you uh, just go on with your part, and then we'll come back with okay. that. Okay. Um, okay. So we would anticipate that permits uh, in in the warrant article we ask that permits be required for landscape companies and. Um, we see this as a public health issue. That's the way it's been characterized in other places because of the noise and pollution caused by gas powered leaf blowers. And because the Board of Health already has online forms for permits and complaints that are related to public health, um, we're proposing that the Board of Health be responsible for the permits and complaints. The um, Board of Health has a, a, a mechanism for um, online permitting. And so it, it looks, when we look at it, that uh, it could be easily added, uh, the request for a permit could be easily added. We see this as being a $25 permit. And then um, the landscape company would indicate the number of vehicles it uses. I don't know if, if you want this much de <laughs> this detail or not, but they would get stickers for these. So that would be the cost of the stickers. And if they needed to be, they would also be given um, a flyer about the, rec the, the regulation and what the, the re regulation was that can be downloadable or they can be given to them at the time. <clears throat> then um, this is being done in other towns. So it, it's similar in other towns uh, also require this kind of permit for leaf blower, for landscape companies to use leaf blowers. And then in terms of 
complaints, again, the Board of Health has complaint forms when, when um, things are violated, when, when regulations are violated. And so people could use the online complaint form, which would include um, perhaps pictures. The it, it would include very specific things, which we've outlined below or in our, in our, um, in our discussion. Um, and that would be where it took place, um, the name of the company that was making the violation and um, any kind of evidence. And that would be submitted via this complaint form to the Board of Health. Um, we don't, because of the education component, we don't anticipate that there would be an enormous number of complaints, um, not as, at least not when people had been fully educated and then there would be fines for violations. So we don't see, we don't anticipate a lot of costs associated with those things since the mechanisms already exist. Um, Annie. Yeah, so my question is mostly have to do with the effect of this bylaw. Do you, um, uh, are, are electric um, leaf blowers known to be quieter than gas powered? Yes, they are substantially quieter. Okay, and one of the the issues with, um, one of the health issues with leaf blowers as I understand it is the amount of material they stir up when they're used, that's still going to be a problem, correct? Well, we won't have the gas pollution and we won't have the noise pollution but we will still have dust moving around that would not otherwise be disturbed. Correct. Okay. One, um, ex excuse me, just one second. One of the, it, uh, the points that we're trying to make is in terms of education about proper use of leaf blowers as well. So even if people are using electric leaf blowers, they're not necessarily using them most effectively and the education component would help them perhaps uh, stir up less dust, even with electric leaf blowers. Okay. Is that it, Annie? That's it, Charlie. Alan Jones. Thank you, Charlie. Um, I, I believe Lexington and Brookline have uh, passed these uh, similar ban pretty overwhelmingly. So I guess one question is how is this? Are these pretty much identical to the uh, bans in Lexington and Brookline? In other words, can, can we look at their experience to? Yes, I, th I think you could. They're, they're, yes, they're similar. Of course, we haven't passed it yet, so we don't know, you know, what exactly Arlington might pass. But right. our, um, the timing of the phase out uh, in ours is exactly the same as Lexington's. Um, the hours are similar. The, the restricted hours are similar. They did not require a permit. Um, and that's something that you know we would like to require, but yeah, they're Actually, they're very similar. So the Brookline does require a permit, and they have a complaint mechanism. Lexington doesn't. Okay, so question two. I think both of those are being challenged by the landscapers, and I'm concerned about legal fees, legal costs to the town. Oh, Lexington's. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the what the state of that challenge is now. I know that it was voted overwhelmingly at town meeting. Then there there was a referendum because the landscapers objected, and then it was again, you know, uh, it voted in in the referendum. So I don't know what's happening now. Okay. Yeah, I know. So I'm, I'm concerned about it. If somebody sues the town about you know any legal fees. From a, yeah. from defending it uh, against the challenge. Yeah, it's a good question. Let's I, we could look into that. Okay, thank you, Sophie. Yes, thank you. So um, my concern is about the cost associated with um, enforcement, or even if I understand correctly, there's nobody actually going to see. Right, you just submit your complaints with photos, and that's all the investigation there is. But what about the costs, or are there costs associated with um, sending out the fees and trying to actually collect fines? And do you have any information from Brookline about how many complaints and the workload associated with following through with the complaints enforcement? 
Um, we don't have any about about that, but in terms of we're not um, anticipating people would go out to investigate. This would be done in, in Washington, DC. This is all done online and they passed theirs in January. And so we know uh, a little bit more about that. Um, Brookline, I can ask them what the, the situation has been, but the, the idea would be that um, it would all, there's already a complaint mechanism again through the Board of Health for complaints and it would follow along with the similar kinds of complaint arrangement. But I can look into Brookline and see. Have you actually, um, have you spoken with the uh, Health and Human Services about what they consider if, if they see this as something they can handle? Um, the, uh, the Board of Health? We, because we were waiting to see uh, how the select board um, voted on this and, and on our um, um, our second round when, when we had made some, uh, we, re we addressed some of their concerns. We don't know what the wording would be yet, but certainly we did talk to the Board of Health um, about the, uh, the, um, the warrant article, but not specifically about those issues. Alan Jones. Sorry. Makaya. Thank you. Um, you may have said this already, but is there a financial penalty for the violation? Yes. And how it, much is that? It, uh, let's see, I have to look at the- I think we set a warning for the first violation, $100 for the second and 200 for everyone after that. And this is in line with the other towns as well. And sorry, a follow up. Do you have a sense of where that money might go? Um, into the general fund. Say that fund again. It has to go into the general fund. Perfect. It's, it's a local um, local receipt. Altasi. Do you have a sense of when the select fund are going to make a decision? Well. They're not, they didn't talk about it Monday. They're not talking about it tonight. So maybe next week? Yeah. We, we haven't shown up on their agenda again since we presented. They and did. I think that Doug Heim is still working on the wording. Yeah, they did pass it um, initially with just a request for uh, for Doug Heim to look at it and for a, a few um, changes that we made. So we don't know. Okay. So they, they have to have a positive vote, but they're still waiting to get additional information? Did you yes, they, they, have, they did approve it at our uh, presentation a couple of weeks ago, but asked for a couple of, they still had some questions and asked for some changes. So we're working on a revision. And Doug Heim's working on the language. And did I read correctly that you said the uh, electric leaf blowers are about the same cost as the gasoline ones? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Al. Uh, Arif? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the question is about the $25 per calendar year that permit cost, do you think that's uh, that's appropriate? Is that high enough um, given, and I'm, I'm guessing that is for these commercial landscape companies, correct? And if they're using those uh, that equipment uh, in a commercial fashion, shouldn't that number be higher? Shouldn't that license fee be higher? What would you suggest? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, I have no suggestion. I uh, <laughs> would have to be based on some analysis um, from the you know surrounding towns and yes. perhaps a, a particular uh, you know a lot more involved than I would want to comment at the moment. But thank you. I would ask you to consider that. Please. Yes, thank, thank you. you. We we based it on the what we saw in the other towns, and so that was the only reason we selected that amount. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Any other questions for Alicia or Anne on this um, 
leaf blower article. So you don't have the final wording from Doug Heim yet that actually says what we're going to do. No. Have you any information on the, um, the operating cost of these uh, devices? In other words, um, how long the batteries last? And, and um, I guess where I'm headed with that question is what, what happens? We, we have a uh, path of action that our municipal, they're out there with their, with their power, uh, with their uh, and they have, if they run out of fuel, they have a gas tank you know, in the truck or something like that. They load up, they keep on working. Uh, my experience with electric devices, particularly, I mean, it's, my experience is limited to my power drill, but, you know, you have to take the battery out and charge it. And it takes a while to charge it. And I don't know if that is a factor in the use of these electric uh, blowers or not. Do you have any information on that? In other words, is it going to cost us more to operate with these things? At least we do have we do have some some information about that. Um, do, do you have that those numbers in your head, Alicia? I don't have the numbers in my head. I what I remember is that it's uh, thirty minutes to forty five minutes, and so typically people have more than one battery. And um, this is one of the upfront costs, but the, they do last longer because they're not, they don't have these moving parts with gas and oil running through them. So apparently the, the life is longer we, uh, than a, a gas powered leaf blower. Um, the charging in some cases can, uh, there are some charging stations we've been told or people, things can be charged in trucks. Um, so anyway, there are, we can we can provide you with more. I just don't have it right in front of me, but we could provide you with more information about that if that would be helpful. There are commercial landscapers who are, you know, operating with all electric equipment successfully. Um, you know, and some municipal departments that are changing over. So it is workable. It's being done. So I don't know exactly how they're doing it, but we can look into that some more. Christine Deshla? Uh, I just want to confirm what I thought I heard that we are already doing this, right? That that already the facilities in the DPW department have voluntarily decided this is the way to go, right? The facilities department is replacing their leaf blowers with electric. Uh, the DPW has replaced some of their string trimmers with electric right. ones, but have not started converting the leaf blowers yet. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so I think the um, I, I, I think the the, um, the question that uh, is before us is whether or not <clears throat> this um, the potential cost of these this conversion is uh, legitimately a worry for the finance committee, or do we think that? It's purely a select board article. Mr. M Mr. Chairman? Yes, Alan. Um, I'd like to make a motion the Finance Committee take no position. I think the costs of this are, uh, are fairly marginal, uh, especially going forward. And uh, I think without the cost being an issue, uh, this becomes a selectman policy issue. And uh, so I, I move we take no position. I second Alan's second Alan's motion. Second. Uh, John Ellis, you have your hand up. I was, I was just going to second that. I was just going to second that motion. Oh, okay. Eleven million dollars a year. Okay. <clears throat> Any uh, further discussion? Oh, Alan Jones. Um, thank you. But on the other hand, I think that if at town meeting. Uh, someone asked the question whether the finance committee thinks there'll be any financial implications. We need to be prepared to answer that, even if it's not in the report. And, and I think so, so far we haven't identified any costs other than any direct costs other than replacement of the leaf blowers. And it sounds like that's happening anyway. So there's no real additional cost. Uh, that's a comment. Right. Yeah, I just think we should be prepared to answer if it's asked. 
Any other comments? Okay, uh, we'll then move to, it's been moved and seconded for um, the finance committee to take no action on this article. No position. No position. Sorry, yes. Um, Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Nakaya Healy. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Harry Padaria. Yes. Sophie Migliazzo. Yes. Daryl, um, sorry. Annie Lacourt. Uh, you yes. forgot me, Charlie. Oh, Jonathan. Jonathan, Wallet. Jonathan yes. Sorry, Jonathan. <laughs> yes. Yes. Voting yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Annie Lacourt. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Uh, Christine Deschler. Yeah. And David McKenna. Yes. Okay. Uh, so the finance yes. committee is not taking a position on this article. So, um, and, and um, Alicia got off scot free. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks for all you do. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is um, the Arlington Historical Commission uh, Fiscal 23 budget increase request. Uh, I am recusing myself from this discussion and handing the chair over to Christine Deschler. Christine, and we All have right. Joanne Robinson, who is um, the chair of the, the chair of the Historical Commission, Arlington Historical Commission. Joanne. Yes, um, I. So no, let, let, let's just, just hang on one second. Um, okay. Where, where are you, Christine? There you are. I, I am here. Um, I just want to confirm, Ms. Robinson, is anyone going to join you? Or are you representing the, the uh, Historical Commission on your own? It's, I am. <laughs> and as I understand it, you are looking for an increase in your budget from um, $2,660 to a $5,000 appropriation. Is that correct? Yes. And I think you um, provided us with a memo. Um, Ta Tara, can you pull that up for us? I, I have a one page description of why, um, you know, if you don't mind, I'd rather, I can share that or- That'd be great. Better, you know, whichever- That'd be great. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Um, I have to just be sure I've got the right thing. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. So I'm going to go down a little bit. Um, our current budget, as you mentioned, is $2,660. And um, in this current fiscal year, <clears throat> as of January, <clears throat> because of the numbers of hearings and um, the administrative support that was um, required to uh, do that work, um, we uh, are already at $3,505. $52.66 um, against our current budget. Um, we, you know, I, I expect that we are going to top 5,000. Um, I, I did a rough estimate if the numbers of hearings that we hold um, continues and it hasn't slowed down. But I wanted to also just show you an example of the hearings that we have had um, over the in you know in 2021, and the commission um, actually has had triple the number of hearings from the prior year to uh, to this you know current FY21 or 2021, I mean, and um, we've had 33 inventoried properties 
and that is the <laughs> the actual largest number of hearings that we have ever had <laughs> um, in the history. And it's because I I think it's probably because of the the boom the real estate boom that's happening in Arlington and many of our properties which have uh, been sold are um, come up for hearings to uh, change the exterior of the house. In addition, we've had two bylaw you know, violations and so that takes us a much longer time to, to uh, work out uh, and so we have repeated continued hearings under those circumstances. And uh, in many cases, uh, we can't resolve a hearing, I mean, a formal hearing in one meeting, but we have to do it in multiple meetings. Um, and some of that is due to Zoom, but uh, I think that I, I have not seen in the first, few months of this year any decline in the number of hearings that we're having monthly. So, um, and so that's the reason that I'm asking to have an increase because um, the cost, you know, for, for this whole uh, boom of um, 33 inventory properties coming before us, including, and we also do sign hearings, which I didn't include in this, um, and then monitoring all of these projects um, and reporting back on them. That's what has increased our budget. I mean, and so this is, this is what I think we need to do in order to uh, have a, a some, substantial enough budget for covering this kind of work. I'm welcome to, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions about this. This has been a very rigorous year for us. We have been having hearings from 7.30 until 10 or 11 or even one until midnight because of the fact that we have so many hearings. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so questions. Um, what questions do people have? Uh, Alan Jones? Uh, thank you. It, it, it looks like um, you're going to be way over budget for fiscal 22. What, what do you do when you run out of money? We have, we have because I, I went to be with Sandy Pooler to find out what we were going to do because I was, uh, you know, I was worried about that, but we do have a certain rollover yeah. from former um, years when we haven't been it, we haven't used all of our uh, budget. And so I think we'll be okay for this fiscal year, but the next one, not. Okay, thank you. Same. Thanks. Question, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Christine. Um, Joanne, can, um, speaking of Zoom, can we zoom out a little bit? Can you just, um, for somebody who's not as familiar with the work of the commission, and thank you for all the work that you do, can you just give me sort of a, just a sort of brief explanation of the sort of jurisdiction of the commission and who are the members and, and sort of what happens in the hearings? Okay. Um, sure. So our commission has a list, an inventory list of properties um, that have been, uh, you know, sort of researched and um, certified as significantly historically or <clears throat> for, for some other reason, like, uh, you know, a, a significant house that had a person who would living in it. And so we have, um, I can send you all a list, but we have a fairly extensive number of um, those properties and um, they are all uh, approved both by the Historical Commission and by the Massachusetts Historical Commission. And we have jurisdiction over any facade 
of those houses that is visible from the street. And so when people, the, one of the biggest things that we have had for hearings this year are um, window changes. And so people who want to change 25 windows that <laughs> you know are on the house and we have to go through a, a, a hearing about what materials they're using, et cetera. And our mission is to preserve the house and the details of the exterior um, as, you know, as well as we can. We try to work with um, the people who come before us to understand um, why we do this kind of thing. And, um, you know, sometimes uh, they have, uh, you know, they have a lot of objections to um, the kinds of restrictions that we put on the house. And so we have to go through that several times and work with them. But, you know, it, it's a, it can be a long process or it could be just a very quick process if, if they understand the significance of their houses. Does that give you, what we do for the hearing is we, that we ask each proponent to come in and give us uh, a picture of the current, you know, situation of the property and then uh, tell us what it is uh, in details uh, in terms of what materials they want to use to repair or, you know, reside or whatever it is. Um, we do have a restriction on ourselves in that we have um, only, only if there is a 25% um, change on the facades, but it's, it's generally if they're, you know, replacing a porch or doing siding or anything like that, it exceeds that. Does that answer your question, Shane? Yes, thank you, Joanne. You're welcome. <laughs> Are you? You're, you're all welcome to come to a meeting <laughs> and, and see what we do too. Arif, do you have a question, uh, Arif? Yeah, yeah, thanks, uh, Christine. Um, so Joanne, yeah, great work. And thanks for that detailed explanation. Really gives me also an idea as to what, what goes on and the work that you do. So I have a question about, um, so, so certainly uh, a lot of hours has been spent and, and on good hard work and, and such, but I'm just trying to understand, um, 22 was certainly hectic, so you blew through that budget, but what sort of, um, what, uh, you know, I, I run sales in, in corporations and you, you have projections and you, you think about, you know, what's coming for the next year. And so in, the, in that line of thinking, you know, what gives you a sense that uh, 23 is going to be just as uh, hectic as 22 was in terms of the, then the cost? So is there a pipeline of these hearings that you already have set up? And, and, and thus uh, that cost is coming from those projects? Is that what it is? Or yes. it's not clear to me from here? From the, what no, I no. Um, I we already have um, a number of hearings that are ongoing. I just put move this over, but I I have to say we have to advertise the hearings in advance of the um, you know the meetings that we have, and so I've been trying to compress the hearings so that the it used to be that we would do an individual hearing for each property, but now I try to compress it into a, a shorter, um, you know, a, a group of hearings that I, I advertise for each month that, you know, two, two weeks before we hold the hearing. And so it runs twice in the advocate. And then we also then have to, um, we do work you know, our administrator answers phone calls um, and does the the minutes and comes to every meeting and um, and she also we get demolition every um, house that has applied is applied for a demolition in Arlington 
has to be uh, approved by us. If it's not on our inventory, we have to write letters to, um, to approve the demolition that we're for properties that we are not responsible for. And anyone that is planning to demolish has to come before us for a hearing too. So it's, it's, uh, it's fairly complex. It's, I mean, it's relatively complex and, and many times people have purchased houses, but they don't really, uh, you know, understand um, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, does that answer your question, Arif? I'm not sure, but, but thank you. I'll just hold it off for now. All right, uh, Alan? <laughs> well, I think this is very important work and this you know, committee of volunteers have been doing a great job. Uh, I can understand the increase in load. I think the increase is justified. So if it's appropriate, I'd like to move the $5,000 budget for this year. Second. Um, before we put it to a vote, I have a couple of questions of my own. Um, do you see um, that you will need a, an increase in your budget even beyond next fiscal year? Um, I don't know for sure. I mean, I can track it for you and come back and you know tell you what has happened. And if we need to, you know, adjust it or something like that, that's, you know, that's something that. And and the your budget is used for advertising, hearing mostly for advertising. We also are planning to do um, workshops because we haven't, um, we haven't. Usually, we have been. Um, uh, we try to inform people about the fact that they have a historic house and we're um, we're planning to do a uh, workshop a couple of workshops on those things so that we can educate people too as well and i mean you have i think i think i think we've got to do that a lot of people who are completely new to historic preservation and you say you have an, a, a paid administrator working for you? Oh, yes. Yeah. And is that covered by this budget as well? That's yes. Uh, yes. Um, those are my questions. Arif, you have another question? Yeah, yes, yes, one. Thank you. Just one quick one. So these are homes. Uh, first of all, it would be interesting to see where, what these homes are and if there's a list somewhere on our LinkedIn website in case I wanted to purchase one, then I would I, know what I'm getting uh, into. So number one, uh, you know, number one, <laughs> whether I want to get into that or not. And then if I'm actually purchasing it uh, and getting into a historical home, I would realize that. And therefore there would be, um, certainly I would accommodate for, for uh, extra costs that could come up uh, in maintaining such a home. So my point now is really, if somebody buys this house and uh, I buy modern homes, but other people may buy this kind of a historical house, then it is, isn't the onus on them to pay all the cost for that house uh, to maintain it and thereby pay your budget and perhaps even pay a lot more for your services. Has that been thought through? Why is the taxpayer such as myself taking on even, I, I'm, this is a very small amount of money granted, but at the same time, I'm asking a macro question in terms of why are we as other taxpayers who don't have these historical homes taking on the cost of a, even an assessment or an evaluation um, for a, 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 somebody who's bought a historical home and wants to do some upgrades and so forth. But I hope you see the relevancy in that question and I hope I'm not overstepping any bounds, but that's sort of the issue here. Do you have a we, short, quick response to that, Ms. Robinson? Um, we don't actually charge uh, for a hearing, I mean, because the town has agreed that we are responsible for doing those hearings and we're a volunteer community, you know, commission. Um, the, if in fact uh, there is a, uh, like the people who are in violation of the, uh, the bylaw and we work with them, then sometimes they can be thought 
they can be um, fined. And we work with building Mike Champa and the building inspection, inspectional services to, to uh, work on that. But that it's, this is, I've been working with the historical commission for <laughs> probably 20 years and we have never charged for a hearing. Makaya, you have a question. Uh, thank you, Christine. And thank you. Uh, 20 years is a long time. Um, my question <laughs> is semi-related to Arif's question um, about purchasing a home. And do you have a set of manual, uh, a manual that you give to? Um, yes, I'll, I'll send you. We have a design guidelines that we send out. And we also have, I'll send you a, uh, we're in the process of uh, upgrading our web page. Um, and, but I'll send, I can send you a link to uh, the Historical Commission's web page. And you can also find information on the town's website. Great. If you could send that to our executive secretary, Tara. Sure. That would be great. I'd be, so I'd be pleased to do that. All right, so we have a motion by Alan Jones, seconded, I believe, by Annie LaCourt. Uh, unless people have any questions, uh, we'll take it to a vote. I uh, will use my, my list. Um, all right, uh, Grant Gibeon, I think, is not here. Same Blundell? Yes. John Ellis, I think he just left. Makaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Federia? Yes. Sophie Maglia Diazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Charlie Foskett, are you abstaining? All right. Shaving Crawford? I, I, abs I abstain. <clears throat> All right. Is Shaney with us? No. All right. Daryl Harmer? Also not here. Andy LaCour? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. George Koso, I believe, is absent. Brian Keller? Uh, that's Bill Keller, and yes. Bill, sorry, Bill Keller. No Alan Tossi? Yes. Um, and Wanda Nascimento? Not here, Dean Carmen, not here, and David McKenna. Yes. That's 11, four and one abstention. That budget has been approved. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ms. Robinson. Thank you for coming. Okay. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Charlie. Okay. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. You're welcome. So um, that covers our agenda materials for this evening, our agenda items. Do we have any, um, any other business that anyone wants to bring up? Silence. What, um, uh, are, is someone, oh, oh, Sophie, are you still waiting for um, something back from the Disability Commission? I am. I met with Sandy and Julie this morning, and I'm scheduling right now a time to talk to the to the co-chairs of the Disability Commission for probably Friday. So hopefully Monday I can report back. Arif Adaria. Uh, yes, sir. I have a question about uh, uh, recruiting uh, for any open positions. I know there was some... Um, there were some candidates in the in the mix, and is that is this appropriate to ask the question now or? or yeah, or it, it certainly is. Let me because I actually I have news, some news. Oh, good. The um, the principal position that has been open for this year is precinct seven, and Jonathan Wallach um, recommended uh, a gentleman in that area who had to get his employer's permission to. Um, join the uh, finance committee. And it took a long time and he just recently got the permission. But he's also um, 
has a family problem and uh, is probably not going to be able to uh, participate in finance committee activities um, this spring. So um, my intention is to, I haven't talked to him, he's, he's all been email communications, but I think what we'll try to do is, uh, is get him to sign on towards, you know, in the next month or so. So he'll be here for, for next year. Um, but we, we may still have some other openings. So the question is, um, well, what, what is your question? Do you want to, you, you can oh, start? No, no, thank, no, and my question. So first, thank you for that, because now that I have, I understand that I wanted to see how to accelerate or not accelerate the um, recruiting PR, so to speak, which we need to do from the, from the communications group. And I'll reach out to my group and start moving on that because it doesn't see, so you've got one candidate that, Looks very promising, but we still have some other openings as well that we know to go need to work. Well, we have we have we have several uh, precincts, and I and I can't remember which ones they are because we've just changed all the precincts. But we have, I think, um, three or four precincts that have members uh, at large who are doing in different precincts, and we have an obligation to try to recruit people from those precincts. So the people actually living in the precincts. So I think, um, I think it would be a good idea to, uh, to do some um, public relations communications with the community uh, about the finance committee and the fact that there are, uh, you know, potentially open positions. So we can, we can chat about that. Okay. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank but that's a good idea. Thank you. Any other questions this evening? A motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Any objections? We're adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you Bye. on.